I am also, uh, like Dennis Keeney, I am also a central committee man, and of my 238 letters that are going out to the Republicans in my precinct, half of them got mailed today, the other half will get mailed tomorrow. So as central committee people, that's what we need to do. For other people, we can go to the Board of Elections and they'll give us a walk book or what they call a walking list, and you can go ahead and contact people that are your neighbors and encourage them to vote. Okay, so um, I would like to mention one more thing. Um, you know, we put on an event like this, and this is not done by one person, so we had a lot of help. But in leading up to this, um, my wife has done just a mountain of work, maybe two mountains of work, and I, I would like to thank Kathy Fischel for that. The fist is better than something else. <laughs> okay, so the next speaker is our Senator Jerry Serino. And when Jerry is finished speaking, he is taking the honor of introducing our Ohio State Treasurer, Robert Sprague. Jerry? Thank you, Scott. Good evening, everybody. Uh, before I introduce our, our featured speaker tonight, I did want to make a few comments. And uh, Commissioner Plesnick was correct. Uh, we, we know we're speaking to the choir here, okay, or preaching to the converted, however you want to say it. Uh, but it, it bears making sure that everybody here has the tools necessary to talk to people yes. about this issue because it is, there are a lot of confused people out there. Once you've convinced them that there is an election on August 8th and they're not all there yet, uh, then we have to explain what this is. And before I get into that, I want to introduce my wife, if she'll stand up, Donna. And, um, the candidate that Scott mentioned before, the uh, candidate for the school board, Rose Iapolo, happens to be our daughter. Yes. So uh, she is in this because they need to change some of the garbage that's happening in the men or schools. Yeah. Uh, paying attention to better test scores and achievement levels and uh, I, I identifying merit as the key thing to, to judge of success. They're worried about uh, which bathrooms people can use and all that business and they're having lengthy school board meetings to discuss that junk. And so we need, we need to get back focused on the basics of education. And, uh, and I know this might come as a surprise, maybe a shock to some of you, but the left, the progressives, the Democrats, whatever title you want to use, um, would it surprise you to know that sometimes they're disingenuous? Sometimes. Or would it surprise you that sometimes they can be Hippocratic? Okay? Um, think about this for a second. Just a few weeks ago, we discovered in evaluating the charters of our opponents, our opponent organizations, the ACLU, Planned Parenthood, League of Women Voters of Ohio and National, the NAACP, and several teachers unions in Northeastern Ohio. We looked at their charters, and we found some interesting information that I don't know, somehow is different from what they're telling people about issue one. To change their charters or constitutions, they require minimally 60%. Several of them are three quarters to change a vote that they have to have in their organizations to change their bylaws or constitution or which candidates they're endorsing. Any major decision has to be made with a, what I would call a supermajority if you will. Yet they're saying that 50% plus one should be good enough to change the Constitution. And we all know why they're doing that, okay? Besides the fact that they're professional hypocrites, uh, and they're very good at it. They can't get things through the legislature. Now, I'm honored to serve with Josh, and I'm, he's the only guy I've ever worked with that has a pack named after him. <laughs> So that's, uh, I was just watching you, uh, uh, looking at it right over, uh, over your head as you were talking, and I thought, wow, that's really interesting. Um, 
they can't get things through the legislature. We, we have a super majority in the legislature. Uh, and what's the number, 67 in the House? And out of, uh, out of 99, and in the Senate, we have 33 senators, and we have the Republicans. My caucus has 26. And we have had the majority for almost 40 years. And we're not going to give it up any time. So what the Democrats, progressives, whatever you want to call them, do when they can't elect candidates, because they put up terrible candidates and they can't raise money, they go around us and they either go to court, like they did to block the heartbeat bill, or they go to the ballot initiative process, and that's why they love 50% plus one. People have said to me as I've talked about this issue, well, it's been good for, what, 60, 70, 80 years, maybe, I think it's closer to 100 years that we've had that. Well, there are some things that are very different now. We have social media today. We have, uh, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of left-wing progressive groups that have a lot of money, right, that can move the dial on elections very, very easily. 20, 30 years ago, they didn't really have that, and 50% plus one might have been a difficult hurdle at that time. It is no longer, so we have to adjust to the times and make sure that outside interests don't go shopping with ballot initiatives because they can't get things done either in the courts or the Supreme Court, certainly, or through the legislature. They are going around us. When people tell you this is an anti-democratic issue, no. The democratic way to do things is through your elected officials. Right. That is how democracy actually works. Right. This, this issue is on the ballot because Josh and his colleagues and I and my colleagues voted for the joint resolution we're allowed to do that in the Ohio Constitution. That's how we don't have to get signatures. We just vote a resolution and it goes on the ballot. That's why we have issue one here because the legislature did its job. And now we have to finish the job with your help as we go forward here to make sure that we explain the issue, sometimes ad nauseum. We had our church festival this past weekend. I think I convinced every person but one that asked me about the issue. Uh, and this person was uh, unstable, okay, uh, and, and in my view. But, you know, I can't deal with circular logic, okay. Uh, but we, we, are, we have the momentum right now. I really believe that we do. And I've never seen the unprecedented cooperation amongst all of the pro-life groups around the state yes. and all of the churches. We got the NRA backing us and sending out mailers, the Chamber of Commerce sending out mailers. And don't believe the polling. The last thing I want to leave you with is the lie of the polls. Last week, they talked about the Columbus Dispatch uh, did a poll of, uh, and said that we were going to lose by 60%. It's going to be 60-40. And we did some digging into what that poll was made up of. It was 500 people that were polled four, almost four weeks ago when most people didn't even know there was an election coming up, right? Uh, and it was, it was, from a statistical standpoint, it was insignificant. But they're doing it to try to discourage us. I think it might have the opposite effect. The pro people, the, the vote no people, are going to see that 60% and maybe they'll get complacent. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. Let them think that they've got it in the bag when we're all out there doing our thing in making democracy happen in the state of Ohio. Let's do it, and let's do it in Lake County is, is, the, yes. is the best example that we can do yes. here. Yes. That's all I have to say about issue one. <laughs> yes. You do have the pleasure of introducing uh, Mayor Mara and Councilwoman Mara. Sure, Mayor Mara and Councilwoman Mara, stand up, please, from Timberlake. <laughs> now, stay standing for a second. We have to have a little fun with them. Because he's the mayor and she's a, just a councilwoman. <laughs> I asked him the other day, we were at an event, and I said, John, have you ever gaveled your wife quiet? <laughs> and he just looked at me with fear and tremor in his eyes. And he said, there's no way in hell I'm ever going to gavel my wife. <laughs> you know, Nancy, you know what I'm talking about. So, so now to the main event here. Um, 
Robert Sprague, uh, I've, I've known him since he we met when you were running for your first term. He's in his second term now. He was handily reelected last time. And uh, we actually worked on some legislation together uh, and that he has brought forward and needed to have sponsors in the, in the Senate and Josh in the House. And, um, you know, a lot of people think the treasurer's job in the state is just kind of a bookkeeping sort of job, right? And I suppose it could be, and some people probably treated it that way, that have been elected treasurer. But especially these days with the, the positive financial condition of our state, we have the healthiest balance sheet, I would say, that we've probably ever had in the history of the state. Uh, and Robert came up with a lot of ideas about how we can leverage that balance sheet to help businesses, to help uh, 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 individuals uh, be able to take advantage of the, the great cost of money and the cost of and the, the balance sheet health that we have in the state of Ohio. And for Lake County and Joggett County and Ashtabula County as well, with all the growers that we have in the horticulture uh, industry, uh, with the uh, agri-loan program that we had before, but it had limits to it. You could only borrow so much money in order to do your planting and so on. And Robert came to us and said, why don't we take the limits off of that? And why don't we help people, help growers do their business a little bit better so they don't have to go to banks? We're sitting on all this cash in Ohio. Let's leverage it. Let's use it. Right? right? And, and this was two years ago. And right when the interest rates and the supply chain stuff were causing, uh, you know, fertilizer costs to go through the ceiling uh, and other costs were going up uh, for all of our growers uh, in our county, in the surrounding counties, um, we were able to, with the treasurer's programs that he put in place and that we passed, to be able to make money more, more affordable and more accessible to those folks so that they could stay in business and deal with inflation uh, and the supply chain issues. It's that kind of creative thinking, thinking out of the box that we need from all of our statewide officers, or officials here certainly, and I am proud to say that I know, not only that I know uh, Treasurer Sprague, but that I've been able to work with him, and Josh has as well, to take the ideas that he comes up with and put them to work for the people of Ohio. So it's my pleasure to introduce you, and it's my privilege to introduce our State Treasurer, Robert Sprague.